What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Brad the Builder here and in today's video we're going to be covering whether or not you need to tune your bike to an aftermarket exhaust, specifically the Yamaha MT-07. Uh, I speak on behalf of this, no other bikes. We're going to go into a deep dive and figure out whether or not you need to either ECU flash or use a piggyback system such as the Power Commander 5 when installing an aftermarket exhaust. Let's get into the video. For those of you that have checked out my channel, I do have an install video on this exhaust, but I've been getting bombarded with tons and tons of questions on whether or not you need to tune the bike to the exhaust. So I found something interesting. Where I bought the exhaust on Revzilla.com, it does indicate something special. Now let's take a look at this. Here we are, Revzilla.com, under my Akrapovic Racing Exhaust System. Under the features, it says no fuel remapping required, but for optimal performance revzilla recommends use of a fuel controller but notice how it says optimal performance i further i questioned it a little bit you know revzilla is a very reputable site they have very good feedback have a lot of products so instead i reached out to acra and this is what they told me in short almost all acra Pavic products are designed with stock settings in mind in the exceptions where this is not true they will include language confirming such on the product page for that system. That is not the case here. The formal position for Acropovic on this subject is that we are an exhaust engineering firm and never get involved with maps or tunes. When there is one associated with our product, that is the product of the bike manufacturer or tune company, not us. With that said, all bikes for regulatory and environmental reasons come from the factory running very lean. So aftermarket product or not, all bikes could benefit from a retuning or mapping. Most people are good with just using something like the DinoJet Power Commander. Others take their bike to a shop with a dyno to get a custom job done. But on the dyno graph, that is without any tuning. So what they're telling us is that we do not need to tune to the exhaust. But the real question is, should we? You heard it guys, but I'm gonna go even further. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the plastics off the tank, take the power commander off, run it with no tune at all for a hundred miles. And we're going to see what the plugs look like to really figure out what, what's going on here. There's a lot of questions, a lot of misunderstanding of what's going on. And according to the forums, I've heard that when 2018 happened, the, the FC changed to the MT, the ECU is also updated, which adjusts more for fuel compensation. And this is 2021. So there might have been another update as well. So we can take a look at that. And the plugs are gonna tell the real story here and whether or not the bike is backfiring on D-cell and other indications of a lean condition. If you guys are new to the channel, I do have a how-to video for this exhaust, how to install the radiator guard, spools, Power Commander 5, and TST Tilt ID, as well as other mods and reviews. So go ahead and check that out. I can put some links up above, otherwise links will be in the description. So go ahead and check those videos out after this one. Thank you to those of you that have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. And if you find this information valuable, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so what is everybody worried about in the first place? Well, we're worried about running lean. Very good indication that your bike is running lean is lots and lots of backfiring especially on D-cell. Now there's two different reasons why your bike might be backfiring. Either you're getting too much fuel or not enough fuel. The first scenario where your bike is gonna backfire is too much fuel. And this happens when air enters through here, goes through the intake, and it gets too much fuel in the cylinder. And the more fuel is more flame time. So fuel, unburnt fuel is gonna enter the exhaust and make its way out the pipe and is usually indicated by flame shooting out. That's too much fuel, okay? And then the next scenario is too lean. So what happens when there's a lean mixture because of the free flowing exhaust, there's no restriction in here, so it's sucking more air through the cylinder. A lot of air is coming in, the same amount of fuel, but it doesn't ignite it right away because there's not enough fuel compared to the amount of air coming in. So it's a delayed fire, which happens to be when the exhaust valve is still open, and you end up hearing that in the pipe because it's firing 
at a delayed time because there's way too much air and the same amount of fuel. Now, when you blow in a fire, it gets really, really hot. That's the same thing that's happening in a lean condition. Too much air is coming in and the heat is going way up because there's, the fuel is burning up very, very quickly. And then if you have too much fuel, it doesn't burn as quickly. Okay, say you're throwing more logs on a fire. It takes a little while for it to get going. This is a very good analogy of how this works. So too much air is gonna create a hotter fire. And what does that mean for your engine? Now for this example, let's look at a piston. This one is badly scored. This is not from a motorcycle, it's from a snowmobile, but it'll still help us figure out what's going on. Believe it or not, the piston actually never touches the cylinder walls. You have a thin layer of oil and the piston's job is to move the rings that touch the cylinder wall, okay? So what happens is if you have a really lean condition, aluminum heats up way faster than a cast iron sleeve, which means this is getting bigger, expanding bigger, and the, the cylinder walls aren't, which creates a scoring and creates melted aluminum on the cylinder walls. And this is in extreme conditions, high revs, very lean condition. That's why engines blow up. Um, it's something to keep in mind. And it's a very good way of explaining what could possibly happen in a lean condition. And this particular engine has valves, has two cams, okay, intake and exhaust. And what can happen here is the valve guides and the valves, same thing. They get very, very hot. It causes friction and high wear and creates a bad seal around the cylinder head because this is also aluminum. Not the sleeve, but the head itself is aluminum. Things are expanding quickly, very quickly in a lean condition. So these are the things that we want to make sure are not happening so we don't cause any damage to the engine. So the reason why we experience a lot of decel popping during a lean condition is because we're hitting the throttle, letting a bunch of air and fuel into the cylinder, more air than fuel because of the free flowing exhaust. And then you shut it and now you're blocking off all the air, but the free flowing exhaust has very little back pressure to keep the fumes inside the cylinder for the right amount of time. And then you have a lean mixture as well, which is firing at a, a delayed time. So it's a bunch of turbulence going on here, mistiming, getting past the valves, it's causing all kinds of problems here because the ECU isn't adjusting enough for the free flowing exhaust. Okay. But this isn't necessarily the case here. So we're going to try that out. We're going to run the bike and we're going to see what happens. We run without a tune and use the ECU and see how well it compensates through the O2 sensor down here. you guys we're back at home uh, it's pretty unbelievable but right when I got home I hit 100 miles on the trip meter so now I'm gonna pull the plugs and we're gonna see what they look like all right so I got the plugs out this is of the right cylinder uh, I would say this one's running okay a little bit lean you can see how white that is in the back and a little bit brown on this side so it's burning okay um, but for the left cylinder it's really really white Okay, just right around here. This is what we're looking at. And especially down inside the plug, it's white all the way around. Okay, this is telling me that it is running lean. So definitely an issue here. Um, I would not recommend running this for a long time like this. I would recommend getting some type of fuel controller or flash an ECU to get a little bit more fuel in there because it's definitely running lean from the factory as we can see here. Uh, this is also an average. This is not, you know, at 7,000 RPM, this is what it's burning like, or 6,000 RPM, this is what it's burning like. This is just an average. Ride the bike 100 miles, you know, up and down through the RPM range, and this is what the average looks like. But it gives us a good idea what's going on, and I would definitely say it's on the leaner side. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, um, so just so we can help everybody out. Regardless of what Acra told me, I still feel that some type of fuel tuner such as the Power Commander 5 or an ECU flash are still good options to get a little bit more fuel into the bike, play it safe, um, get the most out of the pipe for sure. 
the reason I chose Power Commander 5, I've had a lot of people ask me why Power Commander not ECU Flash. I like the ability to do exactly what I did in this video. I was able to take it off the bike, do a test, see what happened, uh, return to stock settings. My ECU isn't messed up. I can you know, return to stock at any time. It really, it only takes me about 20, 25 minutes to pull the plastics off, pull this off, try it out. So that's why I chose Power Commander 5. It also allows me to update tunes almost immediately. Uh, I can get on my computer, plug it in, update the tune, uh, make subtle adjustments here and there. Um, whereas an ECU, you're gonna have to take it off again, send it in, if say you put a K&N air filter on um, at later point versus just doing the exhaust. And, and now you're waiting for who knows how long. People usually do it in the fall so they can get it back in the winter when they're not riding anyways. But I like the, the option to be able to do it right away and not have to wait. So that's why I chose Power Commander 5 versus an ECU flash. But like I said, I think both are really good options. Um, so there you have it. So all in all, my recommendation is to get a tuner for your exhaust. I personally think it's running lean. I wouldn't risk it. I would play it safe, get your ECU flashed, or use a piggyback system such as the Power Commander 5. So after everything, tune your bike, don't risk it. The bike is Euro 5 emission compliant, so the ECU is probably programmed to run even more lean than previous models to meet these regulations. Play it safe, get a tuner, get an ECU flash, spend the money, do it right. You'll get the most out of the pipe and better performance. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.